8th grade open up resources illustrative mathematics unit 8 lesson 10 applications of the Pythagorean theorem problem number one a man is trying to zombie proof his house he wants to cut a length of wood that will brace a door against a wall the wall is four feet away from the door and he wants the brace to rest two feet up the door about how long should he cut the brace the brace can be considered the hypotenuse of a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 4 squared plus 2 squared equals c squared, or the length of the brace. 4 squared is 16. 2 squared is 4. 16 plus 4 is 20, so c squared is 20. Whatever the square root of 20 is would be the length of the brace. The square root of 20 is approximately 4.47. So the length of the brace should be cut to about 4.47 feet. Do something nice. Like this video, say something in the comments, tell a friend about this channel, and hit that thanks button. Problem number two. At a restaurant, a trash can's opening is rectangular and measures 7 inches by 9 inches. The restaurant serves food on trays that measure 12 inches by 16 inches. Jada says it is impossible for the tray to accidentally fall through the trash can opening because the shortest side of the tray is longer than either edge of the opening of the trash can. Do you agree or disagree with Jada's explanation? Explain your reasoning. Well, right away I disagree with her explanation because she mentioned either edge of the opening of the trash can. More importantly, you'd need to consider the longest dimension of the trash can opening, which is the diagonal. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of the trash can's diagonal across its opening. 7 squared plus 9 squared will equal the length of the diagonal squared. 7 squared is 49, 9 squared is 81, 49 plus 81 equals c squared. Since c squared is 130, we need to find the square root of 130 to find the length of the diagonal. The square root of 130 is approximately 11.4, so the length of the diagonal is approximately 11.4 inches. A tray cannot fit through the trash can opening because the trash can's hypotenuse, diagonal, is shorter than 12 inches, the smallest dimension of the tray. Problem number three from 8th grade unit 8 lesson 9. Select all the sets that are the three side lengths of right triangles. We can do this by using the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A. The side lengths are 8, 7, and 15. We'll use 15 as the hypotenuse. 8 squared plus 7 squared equals 15 squared. Let's test it out and see if that works. 8 squared is 64. 7 squared is 49, and 15 squared is 225. Since 64 plus 49 does not equal 225, then this can't be a set of three side lengths for a right triangle. Let's do the same thing for B. 4 squared is 16, 10 squared is 100, and the square root of 84 squared is 84. Since 16 plus 100 does not equal 84, then this can't be a set of side lengths for a right triangle. Let's take a look at C. The square root of 8 squared plus 11 squared equals the square root of 129 squared. Okay, the square root of 8 squared is 8, 11 squared is 121, and the square root of 129 squared is 129. Since 8 plus 121 is equal to 129, then this can be a set of side lengths for a right triangle. And finally, D. The square root of 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, and the square root of 3 squared is 3. Since 1 plus 4 is 5, and 5 does not equal 3, then this cannot be a set of side lengths for a right triangle. Problem number four, from eighth grade unit seven, lesson 10. For each pair of numbers, which of the two numbers is larger? How many times larger? A, 
12 times 10 to the power of 9 is equal to 12 billion, and 4 times 10 to the power of 9 is equal to 4 billion. Since 12 billion is greater than 4 billion, then 12 times 10 to the power of 9 is the larger number. Since they're both being multiplied by 10 to the power of 9, we can just divide 12 by 4. Since 12 is 3 times larger than 4, then 12 times 10 to the power of 9 is 3 times larger than 4 times 10 to the power of 9. B. 1.5 times 10 to the power of 12 and 3 times 10 to the power of 12. 1.5 times 10 to the power of 12 is 1 trillion 500 billion and 3 times 10 to the power of 12 is 3 trillion. 3 trillion is larger than 1 trillion 500 billion. Since both these numbers are being multiplied by 10 to the power of 12, we can just divide 3 by 1.5. 3 divided by 1.5 is 2. That means that 3 times 10 to the power of 12 is 2 times larger than 1.5 times 10 to the power of 12. C. 20 times 10 to the power of 4 and 6 times 10 to the power of 5. 20 times 10 to the power of 4 is 200,000 and 6 times 10 to the power of 5 is 600,000. Since 600,000 is larger than 200,000, then 6 times 10 to the power of 5 is larger than 20 times 10 to the power of 4. They're being multiplied by different numbers. 20 is being multiplied by 10 to the power of 4, and 6 is being multiplied by 10 to the power of 5. Since 200,000 times 3 equals 600,000, then 6 times 10 to the power of 5 is 3 times larger than 20 times 10 to the power of 4. Problem number five, from eighth grade unit three, lesson 10. A line contains the point three and five. If the line has negative slope, which of these points could also be on the line? I went ahead and put the point three, five on a graph. Now one at a time, we can put the other points on the graph and see if the line forms a negative slope. Let's try the point A, two and zero. Here's the point 2 and 0 on a line with points 3 and 5, and you can see that that's a positive slope. The rise increases as you run to the right. Since it doesn't have a negative slope, this point can't be on the same line as 3 and 5. Here's the point for 4 and 7. And as you can see, it's also a positive slope. So 4 and 7 can't be on the same line as point 3 and 5 if the line is supposed to have a negative slope. Let's try C, 5 and 4. Here's the point for C. And as you can see, this does form a negative slope. The rise decreases as you run to the right. This point could be on the line with point 3 and 5 because the two points form a line that has a negative slope. D, 6 and 5. Here's the point 6 and 5, and along with point 3 and 5, the line is a horizontal line, which forms a zero slope. And since that's not a negative slope, do not select point D. The only point that could join 3 and 5 on a line with a negative slope is C. Problem number 6. From 8th grade Unit 3, Lesson 4, Noah and Han are preparing for a jump rope contest. Noah can jump 40 times in 0.5 minutes. That's a half a minute. Han can jump Y times in X minutes, where Y equals 78X. That means 78 jumps for every minute. If they both jump for two minutes, who jumps more times? How many more? The information tells us that Noah can jump 40 times in a half a minute. That would be 80 times in one minute and 160 times in two minutes. This information also tells us that Han jumps 78 times in one minute. That would be 156 times in two minutes. Since 160 jumps in two minutes is more than 156 jumps in two minutes, Noah jumps four more times than Han in two minutes. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video and hitting that thanks button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.